Hello community, welcome! Today we're gonna code stable diffusion. Last video I showed you in detail that stable diffusion is just one form of the latent diffusion model and we have three components in latent diffusion. We have an autoencoder, a variation on autoencoder, a unit I explained to you in detail in my last video, and then we have a very generic text encoder. You are familiar maybe with BERT or SBERT. There is just a clip text encoder, a very basic text encoder. Now, those three are the main components of what we're going to code today. You know, and I have a specific video on autoencoder, a variational autoencoder has two parts, an encoder and a decoder. The encoder is used to convert the image into a low-dimensional latent representation, which will be the input into our UNET dimensionality reduction model, and the decoder on the other side transform the latent representation back to our image. This is the job of the variational autoencoder. During latent diffusion training, the encoder is used to get a latent representation or latents, but let's stick with latent representation of the images for the forward diffusion process, which applies more and more noise at each step. Remember my last video. During inference, the denoised latents generated by the reverse diffusion processes are converted back into images using the variational auto encoder decoder. And we will see during inference we only need the decoder. Now the unit I presented to you in detail in the last video, so not again, but text encoder, you are familiar with BERT, so I don't have to tell you anything about word embedding, sentence embedding, text encoding. So why is it the latent diffusion model fast and efficient? also shown in the last video, it operates in a lower dimensional space and greatly reduces the memory and the compute requirements if you would work in the pixel space. In the original uh, uh, latent diffusion model that operate in pixel space and you would need hundreds of GPUs. But since we are here now in a latent space, it is much easier. As you can see, the stable diffusion has a reduction of multiplicative factor 8. So, this means that an image of shape 512 pixel times 512 pixel in an RGB becomes simply 64 times 64, and which requires a lot of less memory. So, this is the reason we can do this even on our free Colab GPU. And yeah, good idea. Let's have a look at our resources. Where are we? Where are we? Here we have our system RAM, our GPU RAM, and the disk. Okay, now let's go. Yeah, I don't have to explain this to you. I just showed you in my last video everything with a frozen clip, a text encoder, a text embedding. We know this. What we do not know is that uh, the kind of schedule we have. Now, there's a default schedule here, but as I will show you, we go for a little bit more advanced schedule in some minutes. So, let's start. How we write our own inference pipeline with Hugging Face Diffuser library. This is it, this is beautiful. So, we start, we import Torch. Torch device CUDA, here we go. Yes, done. So, what we have, of course, is a text encoder. You're familiar with BERT, we have to have a tokenizer, which uses all, will transform all our words or word pieces in tokens, and then we have here a tokenizer model. We have a scheduler, this is progressively add noise to an image during training. You have the famous UNAT, the model used to generate the latent representation of our input. And then we have the variational autoencoder module that will use to decode the latent representation back again in real images. So let's start here. At first, we have to import a lot of things. So if we have our transformers, we have our clip model, and from the Hugging Face diffusers, we import our auto encoder, our unit, and our scheduler. And what we do, we load the auto encoder model. We have the tokenizer and our unit model. From pre-trained version, you do not have to care about the model. We load a complete model from Hugging Face into our free Colab notebook. And here we go. 
So this takes a little bit more time, beautiful. And then we say now instead of our predefined of the standard default scheduler, we want a little bit more advanced. You can play around here with your parameter. This is the default, so I stick with the default parameter. And here we go. And now we move everything to our GPU. We move our rational encoder to our uh, GPU. We move the text encoder to our GPU and UNAT to our GPU. So beautiful, we have everything available. Now for the uh, interesting title. A photograph of a flower garden in sunshine with a butterfly. Beautiful, this is the text prompt that we provide to the system. Now we go with default height 512 pixel times 512 pixel. You know, you have to go a multiple of eight to be successful here. The number of inference step, okay, should be 50. Let's, let's go crazy and say 100. The guidance scale is close to the maximum 7.5. 7 and then we have just some reproducible factor our seed is 32. Beautiful batch sizes, of course, one. We just go for one. And here we go. Text embedding, text encoder. Let's move on. Beautiful. Then what we do? Beautiful. Another text encoder. We do not care about this. Our text embedding. They are concatenated. Beautiful. Yes. Here we have our Latin generation. The shape is 64 times 64. I just showed you because we are factor multiplicative eight better. 64 times 64 is expected. Beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Number of inference step. Multiplication. Yes. Ready to compute now our loop or denoising loop. Here we go. We just have to wait about a minute. If you're interested, please have a deep dive into the code. It is a little bit out of scope for right now. And then we use the variational autoencoder to decode back the generated latent generation back into our image. Let's start this already. And then when we have our image, you know there is this beautiful thing that we have to have a NumPy in the array for our visualization. And I think we should be fine. So we are still here. Okay. Seconds away from finishing this step. Done, done, done. Image, done. Image calculated. Yes. And this should be the result. And yeah, here we go. Beautiful. We generated from our text prompt and we had this prompt here. Photograph of a flower garden in sunshine with a butterfly. 512 times 512 pixels. And this is the step that you normally do not see because it's all within your library. But if you are interested, this is how it is done behind the scene. And this notebook is an official notebook from Hugging Face. I leave you the link to this Jupyter notebook so you can experiment yourself. You can have a look. If you increase the parameter of 512 times 512, you will see that your GPU, RAM, your CUDA cores, you, they will crash, of course. You need additional uh, RAM, but just for demonstration purposes, this is it what we achieved. I think it looks beautiful. I hope you enjoyed it a little bit was a little bit of fun to have a look to build your, your code, you write your own inference pipeline with Hugging Face Diffusers. And Hugging Face Diffusers is really a beautiful thing. Try it out. Maybe I do another video on the possibilities that we have as programmers with the Hugging Face Diffuser library. It is simply great. This is it for this video. I say thank you and I see you in the next video.